Uh, this is section 361, and it's a discussion about um, composite functions and uh, what we do when we find ourselves um, with composite functions in calculus. So if you remember, a composite function is taking one function and putting it into another. So for instance, this notation here, f of g of x, is where we put, since g of x is inside f in the notation, then that means we put function g inside function f which means if g of x is x plus 2, we got to put it here and square it, and we got to put it here and multiply it by 5. So it looks something like this. We take g of x squared plus 5 times g of x minus 3. And um, so take a second to uh, simplify that. So you might want to stop the video at this time to do that. So... Um, if we flip that up, then um, if we take function, if we look at this notation, it's taking function f of x and putting it into g. So here's function g. So we're going to put f into g, which means where we see this x, we're going to put this whole um, trinomial x squared plus 5x minus 3 into here. And that's going to look like this. So it's going to look like x squared plus 5x minus 3 plus 2. And then again, take a second to simplify that. Uh, so you might want to stop the video at this time. Um, at this time, uh, we, uh, you, you're going to be doing an activity, and, uh, and so um, you can either do the activity, you can either pause this video and do the activity on, um, on your iPad and Notability, or, um, or you can uh, print out the activity and do it in pencil and paper. Um, so let's take a look at that activity. The activity is exploration 17, and it's discovering the chain rule. So at this time, if you uh, if you don't have this in front of you, um, then you might want to stop the video and go ahead and print that out, or locate that in the uh, materials folder and get that loaded onto Notability. And then um, once you do, come on back here and we'll do the first one together. Um, just to get you started on the activity. Okay, I, as of now, I, I'm assuming you have the exploration sitting uh, sitting either in front of you in paper form, or um, you uh, you've got you've got it on your um, iPad ready to start it uh, after you see this short introduction. So let's say we have this original function x to the sixth power. We know how to take the derivative of this, right? It's just a power rule. I right? bring the six down. Uh, it'd be 6 times x to the 5th power, reduce that power by 1. But we can write x to the 6th these two ways. We can say x squared cubed, so this is also x to the 6th, right, because it's x squared times x squared times x squared. Or we can write it as x cubed squared. In other words, we could say this is x cubed times x cubed. Either one of these is the same as x to the 6th. So we know if we differentiate this, either one of these functions, g, um, we should get 6x to the 5th. That's what the derivative should be. We know this because we're looking at the derivative right here. Um, so this is these both of these are composite expressions. We have an inside function, x squared, and an outside function, uh, which is something cubed. And likewise here, we have an inside function, something cubed, and an outside function, that which is squaring that. Um, so just like the introduction uh, with composites, uh, putting one function into another. So we're going to start by taking the derivative using a straight power rule on the outside power only. So in other words, here's the outside power 3. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to rewrite this. I'm not going to touch it, but I'm going to reduce this power to a 2. That's the power rule, right? Bring the, bring the original power down, make it the coefficient, or multiply it times any existing coefficient out there, and then reduce that power that you brought down by 1. So it looks something like this. Brought down the 3, we didn't change the x squared. See, the x squared is still the same. We're not touching the inside at all. But we, we have a new power on the outside, which is squared. So if we simplify this, we know we have 3x to the 4th power. Well, that is not this. So we can agree that just doing the power rule on that outside power um, isn't getting us the derivative. So let's try... Um, Let's look at then what we're missing here. So we need a 6. 
we have a 3, so we're missing a 2. And we need an x to the 5th, and we have an x to the 4th, so we're missing an x. So we're missing a factor of 2x. And, um, and so if we had this extra factor of 2x and we multiplied it by 3x to the 4th, then we'd get x to the uh, 6, 6x to the 5th. Um, so we're missing that factor. So we have to figure out how we can incorporate this factor so that we can get the right answer. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to try doing this with the g of x being x cubed squared. So you're going to bring down the 2, and you're going to leave this alone, x cubed, and then this is going to become a 1. Okay. And then go ahead and try that with the rest of the functions and see if we can, after you do that, you're going to figure out what's, you're going to try to figure out what's missing. So, the, you know, what's, what factor is missing to make it 6x to the 5th, because you know this is the right answer. And then you're going to try that for some other functions as well. So, um, in this case, we get 2x cubed, right? Bring down the 2, leave the x cubed by itself. We're not touching the stuff inside the brackets. And then uh, reduce the power to 1, that's 2x cubed. So it looks like we're missing a factor of 3 and x squared. Okay, so go ahead and complete the rest of the, uh, of the examples. Try to find a pattern here, like it says in your activity. Try to find this pattern, where this is coming from, and try to draw a conclusion. And at this point, you might want to stop the video uh, and accomplish that. And the, the next couple of screens will be going through that activity. Um, so it's best if you complete the activity first and kind of compare the results to what we have. So um, at the, after you've concluded the activity, um, taking the derivative of all the functions, all the f of x functions, and then um, doing the outside power rule on all of the g of x functions, what we notice is that to get our correct answer, the correct answers are all in green. We know that these are the derivatives. These are equivalent composites, mathematically equivalent. In order to get the correct derivative, our missing factor, if we look back into the, to the original um, composite function, our missing factor comes from taking the derivative of the what we call the inside function, or the, the, uh, the function inside the brackets here. So if this 6x squared is the derivative of this, this 4x cubed is the derivative of this. So if we take the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside, we can then get the derivative of the function if we would not write it as a composite. So, and this becomes really helpful for this last one in particular, where we have this trinomial and we can rewrite it as, um, as a, um, a binomial squared. So we can, in essence, we can uh, factor it. Um, and this is where the, the, this, this process becomes really helpful uh, because taking the derivative um, by bringing down the 2 times 5x plus 2 to the 1 power and then just times the derivative of the inside, which is 5, is a, is a much easier way of taking the derivative especially if this power up here is like 3 or 4 or 5 or 6, where you don't want to do all that foiling. So our conclusion is that the missing factor, oops, I misspelled that as be factor, is the derivative of the function inside the brackets. So then we have this, um, we have this, uh, we, we have this process where when we have a composite, when we have a, a function inside of a function, and we see that by by the presence of brackets, um, or, um, we we use this process uh, of derivatives, and this this process of derivatives is called the chain rule. So the chain rule works where if we have um, if we have a function y and a function u, and um, we stick function u into y, then um, we can find its derivative by just doing the derivative of function y with respect to its variable. Um, in other words, doing that outside derivative and then times the derivative of function u, which is on the inside. So, we, that, so the way I help students remember this is we take the outside function times the inside function. So today's focus then, today's essential question is how do we determine when it's appropriate to use the chain rule? So when, is, when does the chain rule help us, and when does the chain rule become cumbersome? Um, and you know, we're better off not using it. 
Um, okay, so let's talk. Let's talk about this example here. Um, using FOIL, if we have a, a binomial square, it might just be easiest to FOIL it out and take the derivative. Um, that's probably the, the easiest thing to do. Um, like I said a little earlier, if this power was a 4 or 5 or 6 or 7, then using FOIL is no longer helpful. Um, but let's do, let's do this using the chain rule. So we talk about, we talk about inside and outside functions. So in this, in this case, the inside function is literally looking at the brackets and seeing what's inside. So the inside function is 2x plus 3, which leaves the outside function what we would call u squared. So in other words, if we call the inside function u, then we can kind of take this out and replace it with a u. And um, so we could call y then u squared. So now that we've now that we've identified what the outside function looks like, it's something squared. And the inside function, it's 2x plus 3. That's what we're squaring. Um, we can take the derivative of each and just multiply them together. So the derivative of this with respect to u is 2u. The derivative of this with respect to x is 2. And when we multiply them together, 2u times 2, we get 4u. But we really can't write it as for you. We need to write it in terms of x because the function is in terms of x. So it's really two, it's really two times two x plus three times two, which is if we if we do all the all the distributing here, we get four x plus six, and multiply out that all times two is eight x plus twelve. We get the same derivative. So, like I said, in this instance, using FOIL is probably a lot quicker. But when this power is big, like to the third, fourth, fifth, or sixth, you might not want to FOIL all that out anymore. You might just want to use the chain rule. Um, okay, so here's a question. What is the derivative? See, I have, I'm using the prime notation. What is the derivative of y at negative 1? And then I'm asking you, what is the equation of the tangent to the curve? Remember, equations to tangent lines are questions we ask all the time. So we're going to keep reinforcing that by asking you to write the tangent line. So we, um, we did this derivative on the last example. So this is, this is a parabola. This is the one we foiled out. We did uh, it's a new previous example. We know the derivative is, eight, is 8x plus 12. We found that from the previous example. So I want to um, I want to find the value of the slope, or the value of the derivative, because when I say slope, you're, you're thinking derivative or vice versa. Uh, at negative one, so we substitute in negative one, and we get a slope of four. So we have a slope of four. So anytime we want to write an equation of a line, we need its slope and a point. So there's its slope, and we know that when x is negative one, and we put negative one into the function. We get two times negative one plus three, which is negative one, or which is positive one squared. So y is positive one, and we could almost read that right off the graph here. So our equation then is in point slope form. We don't we don't use slope intercept form at all. It's too cumbersome in calculus. Uh, our our equation is y equals slope of four x minus this point negative one plus one. And there's that tangent line. So if you notice, I went up four, one, two, three, four, over one. That's our slope of four. So up one, two, three, four, over one. There's our slope of four. Um, okay, let's try this one. This is where, you know, we've got this power. It's much bigger than two. Foiling it just doesn't seem logical. Um, but hey, if you want to go ahead and FOIL this out, we can go ahead and FOIL this out. But we're going to stop. Seriously, uh, we're not going to we're not going to spend that much time doing algebra. This is just FOIL out once. We still have a power of three to go. We're not going to do that. This is where the chain rule is much more beneficial. So we have to identify the inside function. The inside function again is literally what is inside the brackets. So the inside function is three x squared plus four. We're going to call that u. So our y becomes 6u to the fifth. And now we can just differentiate both of these statements. 
So the derivative of this is 30u. The derivative of this is 6x. And we're going to multiply those together. Notice I'm using the prime notation instead of the Leibniz notation. You can use either one. So this derivative is 30u to the fourth times 6x. And that equals 30. And now I got to put my, x, my, my substitution back in here, my 3x squared to the fourth to the fourth power times 6x. And we're going to multiply the 30 and the 6x to simplify it just a little bit. So that's 180x times 3x squared plus 4 to the fourth power. And we just leave it like that. This is the, so we leave it in, in, in its factor form. We don't try to do anything else with it. Um, but, you know, because this power is so high, you're going to have to take my word that, uh, that this is actually the derivative, and it is. Um, okay, so let's look at a trig function. A lot, a lot of times we have a trig function, and then we have, um, we have the cosine of something, and it's a real complicated expression like this. So um, this is a perfect example of a, of a chain rule where you really have to do the chain rule. You don't have any other choices. There's nothing to FOIL. There's nothing to simplify. So the inside function is x squared plus 1, which makes the outside function cosine u. And when we differentiate each one of these things, the derivative of cosine is minus sine u. The derivative of u is 2x. And using, I've got my Leibniz notation here, so dy dx is equal to minus sine u, that's the dy du, times 2x. And then we're going to substitute in our x squared back in these brackets. So we're going to have minus sine of x squared plus 1 times 2x. I'm going to bring the 2x and multiply it out front here to make it a little simplified. And so this is minus 2x sine x squared plus 1. So in this final form, you might be able to see the derivative of the outside, because we now have a minus sign, and the derivative of the inside with a 2x. And at some point in time, you might be able to get to jumping right to this statement instead of setting all this up. So for tonight, um, we're, uh, you've got enough information now to do the day one of the chain rule homework, so you can go ahead and get started on that.